Recording now turned on. And I'm still getting people showing up. Um, and so while we're doing that, let me see if I can quickly find the list of future programs. Yeah, here it is. In April, we have Ed Grabowski, who is going to talk to us about flatly and international mail order fraud, the success of Professor A. Victor Segno in the European African colonies. In May, we have Bruce Downs, who's going to talk to us about uh, post naval Francaise. And in June, we are going to have uh, France and the Holy Land from Mike Bass, who uh, unfortunately he and I had some confusion about when he was to speak to the group and quickly said June would work for him. So we have three more presentations scheduled and always we're looking for more volunteers to add on to that. So without further ado, let us turn this over to Jim and you should be able to share your screen and away you go. Oh, I should announce also, I'm going to mute everybody and Jim, you'll have to unmute yourself. There we go. So, You're still muted, Jim. Jim, you are on mute. Lower left corner of your screen, if you're using Windows, you need to unmute. I am now unmuted. There we go. It's in a different spot in my screen. But, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, and here's my first slide. And I'll go to uh, make that a little bit bigger here. Aha. Uh -huh. There we are. So the famous quote from Felix Ubuye is heck no, and we'll get to the reasons behind that as we go. And uh, I've shown uh, Felix's uh, picture here on a postmark, uh, Fort de France, and we'll discover that uh, he covered many French territories as a French colonial administrator and how he turned himself into uh, uh, a France Libre uh, war hero uh, as he uh, went through his duties in darkest Africa. I might mention here that uh, besides my uh, traditional exhibits of saint pierre Michelon uh, that I've undertaken to uh, collect a whole bunch of different uh, other uh, topics. I, and what I like to do is, uh, number one, get the stamps. Number two, uh, try and make an exhibit out of them. Number three, make a magazine article, uh, suitable for publication out of it. And number three is what you see here, uh, make a slide program that uh, I can show it. You can use the same research, so uh, it 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 saves time and also gets me to uh, do very well. I'm getting a a note here that my connection is a little bit unstable, so I'll continue on with the uh, presentation. Okay, m many of us uh, in our collections have come across this particular omnibus issue, uh, Felix and Boya. 
1844. And most of us are familiar with this uh, particular stamp, but uh, came in a set of two for many colonies, which I'll talk about. Uh, and I uh, sort of wondered who is Felix and why did he uh, uh, become the subject of uh, uh, you know, his own postage stamp uh, shortly after his death. Uh, one thing that we can note here uh, in his uniform is the Cross of Lorraine, which is uh, sort of the symbol of the, uh, the Free French uh, resistance during World War II. Next, uh, these come in uh, many forms. Here's an interesting uh, uh, card with this uh, portrait on it uh, from Guadalupe. Now, uh, that's going to become interesting because he uh, made his fame uh, essentially before the war as the governor general of uh, Guadalupe. Uh, Continuing on. Now, Felix Mboye uh, was the grandson of slaves, but he was born in French Guiana as a free man. And he was born December 26, 1884 at Cayenne. And the French uh, colony residents, uh, including the freed slaves, had full French citizenship. And uh, the abolition of slavery in the French colonies uh, occurred in 1848. One of the champions uh, was uh, Chirchelier, uh, and you can see the stamp here from Martinique, and uh, his first name was Victor. And when you see these little arrows here, We temporarily lost your audio there, Jim. Got sent um, over to continental France uh, and studied in Bordeaux, and I guess uh, obtained his uh, uh, high school certificate and went to Paris, entered the colonial school in uh, 1906. And I guess in his spare time, he also enrolled in the faculty of law and obtained his law license in uh, in Paris uh, back uh, in the early 1900s. So quite an accomplished uh, student and he went on to uh, join the, uh, the French colonial service. Again, we get back to this uh, set of stamps that was uh, issued in his honor shortly after his death. And I've indicated here, of course, French Guiana, was his birthplace. And I've shown in these career postings here, the different um, French colonies that he was actually posted to as an administrator. So we have uh, French Equatorial Africa where he uh, eventually was most famous here. Of course, uh, the AEF, also included different postings within that uh, at Ubangi, French Sudan, French Congo, and Chad. Chad is gonna be a particular uh, interest later on as we go there. Uh, he was also in the Cameroon. He was the governor general of uh, Guadeloupe at one point. Uh, and I've got him here in uh, Martinique, of course. And uh, I think that was mainly in the Caribbean and the African uh, uh, French Empire where uh, he was posted. Uh, now I've only shown one stamp from each of the colonies. Each of the uh, stamp issues came as a set of two but I've just shown the, uh, the lower values here uh, in the illustration. Now he subsequently 
became a director again in uh, French Equatorial Africa. Um, usually the abbreviation is AEF for the, the French the name of the colony. And he served there for 20 years. Uh, like I say, his successful appointments took him to uh, uh, various parts of uh, AEF in Madagascar. Uh, because he was obviously of African descent, uh, he supported educated Africans and placed uh, many of them in the colonial administration, which is something that was not often uh, done. Uh, also, he supported the preservation of French culture and where he was able to, he also uh, took up uh, the local languages uh, in his African postings. So he had a long career here uh, in the French uh, civil service for the colonies. Uh, he was appointed a Knight of the Legion of Honor in 1927. In uh, 1933, he was actually appointed the Secretary General of Martinique. Uh, he then served in French Sudan and uh, a very important posting in 1936, he was elevated to the rank of the governor of Guadalupe. Now, as the governor of Guadalupe uh, in the West Indies, if you go searching uh, the Guadalupe uh, uh, tourist information, uh, he is revered there with, I'll show you later, monuments and uh, various uh, commemorative uh, uh, meetings and stuff like that uh, uh, of the locals. He is famous for a couple of his speeches. One is his Joël Le Jeu, Play the Game speech of 1937, which he delivered to students at the Carnegie Middle School in Guadeloupe. Uh, and of course that was, uh, I think one of his uh, uh, main attributes for the people uh, that were in the colonies was to play the game, uh, take advantage of uh, you know the opportunities that are given to you by the colonial power, and uh, actually I think they took this to to heart in in Guadeloupe. And, and Martinique, because uh, I think to this day, they uh, opted in the 1940s to become uh, departments of France proper. Uh, he gave another speech, which uh, the people in uh, uh, Guadeloupe uh, recall very fondly. Uh, he was speaking at a workers and planters strike, uh, the angry crowd, uh, probably uh, descendants of uh, slaves uh, within the colony were demanding reparations for historical wrongs. Uh, and he uh, was the, 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 the governor and he urged them not to resort to violence against the uh, owner of the uh, sugar factory who was barricaded inside his house with his family. And there's a famous quote, uh, we told the workers essentially to play the game. He said, look at these hands as black as yours. They've never been soiled or spattered. I'm speaking to you and to those above you, I'm speaking to Guadalupe. Well, you can pick out some of the stamps of, uh, of Guadalupe. And I've shown a couple here, one you know, beautiful uh, Caribbean island, but even to this day, uh, talk about speaking to crowds and, and unrest among the population. Uh, I see that uh, even within the last couple of months, uh, there's been some uh, unrest in Martinique and Guadeloupe uh, about uh, you know, some of the wrongs that they would like to see righted. Uh, even the These colonies, I think, uh, news out of Jamaica is that they want to get rid of the monarchy and, and the vestiges of, uh, of, 
a British rule and uh, also maybe get some reparations for uh, the days of slavery, which uh, while they're long gone, were certainly not forgotten. And you can see the sugar mill here. Uh, I guess they were worked with slave labor until uh, you know the the, the uh, colonial slavery in France was abolished. But here's a sugar mill uh, where uh, you know sugar cane uh, being one of the uh, main products in the West Indies. So he continued to support for local education, uh, the placement of more local uh, people in the administration and uh, its preservation of local culture. Now, typical of Amboy's approach was when he had to organize the annual Guadalupe Governor's Gala Ball. Previously, three separate social gatherings were held, one for the Europeans, one for the African descendants, and one for the uh, mixed race people, the mulattoes, as they were called. Uh, as the first non-European head of the colony, he had a brilliant solution to combine the galas into one uh, larger party and invite everyone. His actions uh, instantly endeared him to the majority of the colony's population, and he is uh, revered to this very day for uh, uh, his, his actions uh, to uh, unite the colony. Uh, however, it was getting too good. Uh, a boye who uh, between uh, his postings would uh, spend his time in Paris uh, working the local politics uh, and of course trying to uh, uh, put some uh, emphasis from the French government on uh, you know the, the the colonies that spend more money out there on uh, on on uh, colonial endeavors, uh, but here he was uh, at the dockside uh, waving goodbye to get recalled to Paris, and there were large crowds uh, shouting "Viva Papa Aboye" at dockside, and he was quite a popular uh, governor. Uh, and I could say honor to this day. Uh, anyway, Felix, when he got back to Paris, found out that uh, they uh, wanted to appoint him to uh, be the governor of Chad in French Equatorial Africa. Now, uh, was this a promotion or a demotion? Well, uh, when you're <laughs> any kind of uh, political or even civil service uh, job in there, uh, you uh, create uh, enemies. And he had a few in Paris uh, who thought that this was a great place to park uh, a boyer uh, from the point of view of it being a demotion. And uh, probably there were others who, because of uh, the way the world was unfolding in the late 30s, uh, thought that uh, he would be a strong administrator in Chad and uh, help out uh, uh, securing the colony from uh, uh, the uh, growing uh, war war uh, uh, talk in uh, in Europe. Now, question is, where is Chad? And I've provided a map here, which kind of when I start to look at it, you start to realize that uh, French West Africa covered a huge area of Africa, probably excluding Algeria here, also French territory. Uh, French Equatorial Africa in here again took up a huge part of uh, Central Africa. And I mean, these areas were many times the area of metropolitan France. Uh, and also there were, uh, you know, neighboring uh, Italian uh, Libya. Uh, the Italians were also into Ethiopia and uh, war uh, in 1939 uh, started in, uh, in Europe. Uh, 
uh, about the same time that he got posted to Chad, which we see here with Fort Lammy, the old name here, uh, the, the uh, capital of the uh, colony. And again, we see the, the typical colonial uh, issues for Chad here, their old prince on uh, um, Middle Congo uh, stamps, and uh, they come complete in the 1930s with overprints, and uh, they used to like to, sh sh uh, on many French colonial stamps, show uh, young native ladies uh, as the, the, the subjects of uh, uh, that, along with, uh, say, some of the wild animals of the jungles. Well, things move along very quickly after he got to Chad. Uh, France fell to the Germans in June of 1941. De Gaulle issued his declarations to la France say, uh, and it turns out that Chad was strategically located south of Axis occupied Libya, uh, and it played a, a, a interesting role in the control of North Africa. Uh, anyway, here's the stamp that shows uh, a tous les Français issued by, uh, by General de Gaulle, who broke away from the, uh, uh, the French Vichy government and landed in London. And we'll talk about that in, about a, in a moment. Anyway, uh, Alboye, being a non-European, suffered no illusions regarding the implications of Vichy's capitulation to the Nazi racial philosophy for himself and other non-European French nationals. Uh, their uh, race relationship, uh, uh, relations, uh, uh, Included, uh, you know, firing squads and, and concentration camps, uh, which uh, were not appealing if you're uh, certainly a non-European, and even if you uh, were. Now, De Gaulle headed up uh, what's pretty much called a ragtag group of defectors from uh, the pro-German Vichy of France. Uh, now, in absentia, he was sentenced to death by Vichy in 1940, and he arrived in London, uh, but he was barely tolerated by the British, and he was headquartered in a solo Soho bar in London, and he was desperately looking for friends and allies. Uh, perhaps he had one in Chad. Uh, this is the French pub at 49 Dean Street in Soho, London, England. Uh, now I went over to attend a stand show in London and I, I guess it was 2010. And I made a point of uh, getting to Dean Street to see what the, the famous French house or the pub that uh, de Gaulle uh, had for his headquarters uh, at, at the time, I guess a back room in here. It was a pretty interesting place uh, back about 2010. Uh, it was a kind of a dingy uh, uh, place. You go into the bar here, and when I got there one evening, uh, it was crowded. And there would be uh, old fashioned pictures, photographs, black and white ones uh, covering the walls in there from the old days when uh, it was a meeting place for the uh, for De Gaulle to uh, uh, start his uh, Free French uh, movement. Um, also, at that time, the patrons would take their uh, glasses of beer, they only sold half pints of, of beer rather than full pints, and they still do that to this day. And they were all out in the sidewalk here, and I remember talking to one lady about whether she <laughs> recalled the history of the of, of the, the, the bar and uh, of course she was just interested in getting her drink and uh, hadn't heard about it, too much about it before. Uh, apparently uh, you can see the signs on the windows that talk about 
Rickard's beer. And apparently the story is, is that uh, it's the uh, only pub in Great Britain to sell the most Rickard's uh, beer, uh, like I say, in half pints there. And uh, the, the place has been pretty much gentrified uh, since the war, uh, although uh, lately they've been having uh, problems because of the shutdowns, because of the COVID-19 uh, outbreaks, and uh, they were trying to uh, survive financially in there. Anyway, interesting place to visit if you happen to get to, to London. The, the bar where uh, de Gaulle hatched the, the, the uh, free French uh, uh, government. Anyway, our friend and Chad Iboye was kind of shocked and uh, appalled by Marshal Petain's pro-German armistice proposal. Of course, uh, uh, Petain, he wanted, of course, the, uh, the French Empire to uh, join with uh, Vichy France uh, uh, on the uh, uh, nominally uh, uh, neutral uh, French, French Vichy government. Now, his reply to Petain was, heck no which uh, I say is the English translation of his reply in reference to joining the, the hacking Germans. There actually is a website that I got this quote from called Heck No, which uh, uh, indicated uh, again, uh, boy is uh, uh, shocking uh, and appalling uh, reaction to uh, Patan's uh, uh, ideas about capitulation of the uh, French Empire to the uh, Germans. So Eboye secretly prepared to rally Chad and all of the nearby French Equatorial Africa to General de Gaulle's free French cause. Uh, so uh, this is where the original stamp issue with the Boye uh, commemorated because uh, Chad was the very first French colony to declare allegiance to de Gaulle and the Free French on August the 26th, 1940. While taking uh, Boye's lead, Cameroon, French Congo, and Yobangi Chari uh, all declared for Free France in the next five days. Now, this is an interesting cartoon that I came across here uh, with uh, Adolf himself sitting on the, uh, the uh, casket of France, which is presumed to be dead, except for this arm that's going up and putting the V for victory sign on the wall. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, if this was really a black arm <laughs> from Uboye as the first French administrator to rally to the Free French. And uh, maybe it was his single arm reaching out of the coffin of France in the cartoon. Anyway, uh, sort of interesting perspectives on uh, where and how the uh, fighting Free French uh, sort of got its start or got its first big push. Now, Mboye himself received General de Gaulle on October 15, 1941 at Fort Lamy, uh, which of course has been renamed uh, since then. Uh, and here's an interesting stamp from uh, uh, the Republic of Chad. Uh, the label translates Chad Land of Loyal and Courageous Men signed by Charles de Gaulle. And we've got Charles over here on a sort of a metallic uh, uh, portrait and Felix and Boye, uh, the first uh, friend he found in Africa uh, after he moved out to London and uh, uh, started up the Free French. Uh, 
Gabon, part of uh, French Equatorial Africa, was the only Vichy holdout in, in that area. And he resisted until November 1940 when he finally, they, Gabon, uh, joined the Free French. Now, this is an, uh, perhaps one of the better stamps here from uh, French Equatorial Africa uh, issued after the war. De Gaulle, of course, knew who his friends were, and they appointed uh, Mboye uh, to be governor general of French, all of French uh, Equatorial Africa after the Free French gained control of the uh, uh, region's other French territories. Uh, these little arrows I put on here are things we're going to talk about as we go along a little bit later. So this is the stadium at Brazzaville, which is uh, constructed in memory of, of Mboye. Uh, you can see the sketch of it here. I believe it's all been rebuilt and there's a much more modern uh, stadium there. And also, this is a famous building in Paris, the Parthenon on Pantheon, I'm gonna get the uh, pronunciation straight. And we'll find out about that as, uh, as we, we go along with the presentation. Uh, now, Mboye, again, was uh, the first defector from Vichy, France, within the French Empire to join de Gaulle. And uh, as such, he was decorated as a companion of the Order of Liberation. And this is kind of the kind of badge you get, I guess, from the Free French. You can see the Free French symbol uh, in the dagger here, uh, the French issue later on, on the 20th anniversary. Uh, and also, he uh, rose a, a battalion of uh, 40,000, uh, uh, mainly uh, native troops from African troops uh, for the first armed troops of the Free French uh, uh, volunteers. Uh, and of course, the reward he gets from the pro-German Vichy government was that he was sentenced to death in abstention in 1941. Now, Mboye's actions in Chad actually prevented the Italians from closing the gap between General Graziani's uh, Libyan army and the Duke of Aostra's Ethiopian army. So here's the Duke of uh, Oastra, uh, who'd be uh, in Ethiopia because the Italians had taken over Ethiopia. And here's a, a, a more uh, <laughs> a busy looking uh, uh, General uh, Graziani uh, who commanded the Italians in, in Libya in here. And of course, Chad sort of sat in here. Uh, they defeated the French uh, up in France and uh, they could have coalesced uh, uh, against uh, uh, the, the British in Egypt and the French in equatorial Africa. And uh, this was kind of an important battleground in North uh, Africa uh, during the Second World War. Uh, if you recall the defeat of the Libyans and the Germans in North Africa, uh, that caused the uh, occupying North France to advance into Southern France, uh, the Vichy area uh, after they were threatened because of the loss of, uh, of African territory uh, as the war proceeded uh, in Europe. Now, the boy's securing of Chad for the free uh, French allowed General Leclerc to lead raids from Chad into Italian Libya. 
And of course, there was a set of stamps that commemorates uh, uh, Leclerc's uh, troops, the, the early uh, denominations uh, show, uh, particularly in this uh, five franc stamp from Cameroon, uh, the Leclerc's troops uh, in Chad en route to Strasbourg. Uh, Leclerc had his men swear an oath, which they pledged to fight on until their flag flew over the Strasbourg Cathedral. And that pledge, as we well know, was, was kept. And uh, certainly we can relate uh, uh, the, the series of uh, uh, Chad to Ryan uh, airmail stamps that were issued uh, in 1946, this being the representation of the army on their camels and horses and uh, you can see vehicles and stuff like that uh, attacking uh, uh, into uh, uh, Italian uh, territory north of uh, Chad. Pretty soon as the war was going, the allies in the free French way, uh, there, uh, de Gaulle, along with uh, de Boye, uh, called a conference of uh, politicians, free French politicians and high ranking colonial officials from the French African colonies. They met at Brazzaville in French Congo. Uh, there to more or less decide, or at least persuade uh, some of the local colonial officials uh, from French Africa of what they would be doing after the war. So Felix Mboye was an organizer and he actively participated in the Brazzaville Conference on Decolonization, essentially. Uh, but his theory, such as indigenous precipitation in the uh, administration, were taken up. The conference recommended political, social, and economic reforms and led to the agreement on the Brazzaville Declaration. Now, here's de Gaulle and the stamps. He seems to overtake. Uh, uh, Mboye, but we'll get to some other stamps where the main feature is Mboye. You can see on the uh, uh, stamp, uh, de Gaulle leading, <laughs> leading the colonialists back in here, and this has got to be Mboye in his uniform and is, uh, of course, recognizable uh, uh, as uh, sort of standing in the front of the crowd. Of course, De Gaulle's idea and the idea of the, you know, the free French uh, government in exile was that uh, the French empire would become the French union of nations uh, based on equality if you want. What they didn't have in mind was independence, which eventually this sort of thing turned into. And uh, I think ever since then, uh, uh, the the French influence uh, in these parts of Africa has has uh, uh, gone from uh, you know where they were the rulers of the whole place and uh, has diminished over time as independence uh, uh, became the uh, the the main uh, uh, idea that the uh, indigenous people uh, had. Uh, as to move out of uh, the French Empire, move out of the French Union and become independent of their own. Anyway, the, the Brazzaville Conference was kind of just the start of this, so I guess you have to give it some credit here. Uh, here is uh, uh, Mboya with de Gaulle on here. Of course, de Gaulle gets his own stamp in, in here. And there's an interesting, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, Togo, uh, 
commemorating the 25th anniversary of uh, the death of de Gaulle. And, and here he is speaking to uh, the colonialists uh, at the uh, uh, Brazzaville Conference. Uh, and here I sneak a little stamp in from uh, Fujira. Uh, this is off a whole sheet that commemorates uh, with different designs uh, the uh, anniversary of de Gaulle. Uh, and this talks about the de, de Brazzaville uh, conference. And of course, uh, our good friend Felix here, he sort of ends up at the back of the line a little bit with the prominence giving here, but we'll move on to some other stamps where uh, Felix uh, 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 is uh, the main subject with de Gaulle sitting in the background. Now, Felix and Boy, uh, unfortunately, took his family to Cairo in uh, 1944, uh, I guess, on a, to celebrate, uh, uh, you know, the, the coming victory uh, against the Germans. And uh, he died of a, of a heart attack. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, his hero's burial at the Pathenon, Pathion. Uh, in Paris, and he gets featured on things like banknotes, uh, 1961, uh, the Central Bank of uh, Equatorial African States uh, shows him. So there's, there's other commemorative items that uh, you can add to your uh, collection of uh, Felix uh, and Boy. Another thing that's sort of interesting these days is that uh, on the internet, you can go in and actually find original documents, say from July of 1944. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, the obituary uh, for uh, Felix uh, and talks about his time in Guadeloupe and uh, uh, et cetera. And it's quite interesting. Uh, he was attending a conference in uh, Cairo, uh, giving a speech uh, when, when he passed away uh, in uh, 1944. Anyway, he was one of the heroes of the Free French. Uh, and as a French hero, uh, his uh, body, his remains were transferred to the uh, famous building in uh, uh, Paris, the Pantheon. And in addition to Felix, our friend from earlier on who uh, championed the freedom of the uh, slaves uh, in uh, Martinique, Victor Schlosser, uh, uh, he was also interned uh, in the Pantheon at the same time. And this is uh, your pass to attend the ceremony. It's, this is black ink around here, kind of like a morning uh, cover. And it gives you the dates and, and uh, where you're, you're allocated uh, seating or whatever for a, a delegation uh, uh, to the ceremony. And this is the building, the, the uh, Pantheon uh, in 1946 off of uh, a postcard. You can see the 1946 uh, version of uh, taxis and something in front of the building like that. Here's uh, where his uh, remains are, are buried with the citation in French, of course. Uh, you can see his name in here, uh, and uh, quite quite elaborate. Um, so he's uh, you know buried with all the other uh, notables and and heroes of uh, of France. And here is a stamp in two thousand and four. Uh, finally, top billing for Felix with De Gaulle in the background in two thousand and four. Uh, 
So I, I, there's certainly better stamps with a more flattering portrait than, than, than this one. But uh, anyway, uh, certainly uh, everybody remembers de Gaulle. Felix was the guy that kind of started him on the path to, uh, well, to eventual victory. Now, Michael, I say, now Boye is uh, uh, revered, particularly in the West Indies. Uh, these are various monuments. Uh, the commemoration of his famous speech to the uh, uh, Saint Rose uh, uh, crowd that uh, Wanda Lynch, the owner of the uh, sugar mill, uh, has, has got citation in French here. And uh, he's got uh, several monuments uh, uh, in the French West Indies. Within France, uh, uh, in Paris, uh, the Place Félix Elvoye is named for him. Uh, there's a, uh, Paris Metro Station with his name in a primary school also bears his name and this I believe is uh, uh, his uh, bust uh, in the uh, uh, square in Paris. Going back to uh, when we talked about Brazzaville where uh, he ended up being the governor general, this is uh, him in uniform on a statue, Felix and Boye. Uh, this is uh, at the entrance to the stadium, the old stadium in Brazzaville in here. And of course, in KN, his birthplace, there's quite a, a modernistic, bold uh, statue of him uh, uh, in a uh, prominent place in uh, uh, KN. So you, you come to some conclusions and it, it seems that without an individual like Felix and Boye from French Guiana, who became the first French uh, colonial governor with uh, colonial roots and who pushed his policy of integration and in local elites, the wartime free French government of Charles de Gaulle would never have had the power that it uh, had during the conflict. Uh, I mean, de Gaulle himself uh, went from being a ragtag, uh, a lower ranked general uh, to actually be president of France uh, in the post-war years, uh, which is quite, quite remarkable. But he had uh, lots of help, if you want, from uh, uh, fellow patriots such as Felix and Boye. Uh, in there. This is a rather an interesting cartoon uh, by an American uh, artist, Charles Henry uh, Alston. Uh, here's uh, Felix himself here in his uh, governor general's uniform. Uh, here he is uh, planning his revenge on uh, uh, the Vichy government here. The swastika with the whip against uh, native non-Europeans uh, in here. He's fighting off the Italian generals from both sides of Chad in here. And under Amboy, fighting French Africa became an important source of manpower for the United Nations. And there's his native troops all lined up. And I think there are 40,000 of them by the time he got going. Uh, and there's, a, I guess, an interesting fact that his decision uh, to act against the Vichy French uh, actually endangered the lives of his three sons and daughters in occupied France. But it didn't deter him from casting his lot with the United Nations. And again, the fighting French from equatorial Africa, uh, which was kind of the seed that uh, sprang up uh, the uh, uh, 
pre French uh, fighting forces and the overprinted stamps that followed as uh, colony by colony, uh, uh, they uh, became under control of the free French. Anyway, one of the interesting things uh, is how much information you can pick up uh, from many sources on the internet. And uh, one of the interesting things with references is you always access uh, the, the dates that they were on here because they change, uh, can change frequently through here or others of them stay up for maybe a decade or more uh, in here. So, Essentially, that is the end. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Uh, the information. Uh, now, uh, there is uh, much of uh, what I talked about uh, appeared in the uh, January, February uh, issue of the uh, France and Colonies of Philatelist. Uh, uh, with the slideshow, I'm able to show and discuss uh, more general aspects of, uh, uh, you know, how uh, certain uh, historic stuff along with the stamp issues uh, 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 occurred through time. And uh, many of the events, of course, through the years, since it's been you know, 70 years since uh, the war uh, get commemorated, commemorated uh, in, in many of the independent countries and also in France itself uh, uh, to uh, show victory, the various battles, the, the generals that were involved, uh, particularly in the free French side as well. So that kind of concludes uh, uh, the presentation and uh, are there any questions or inquiries or anything? Of course, the reason for publishing this information is to see if there's anybody else has information or maybe some original letters that uh, uh, have uh, Felix's uh, name or even his autograph on. So I'll hand it back to Ken now for uh, to continue the meeting. Yeah, let's open it up to questions. Thanks very much, Jim. I have something. Larry. Yeah, the uh, Jim, the illustration you showed towards the end, which talked about Ibuwe's support of the United Nations. Uh, the UN wasn't founded until the fall of 1945. So perhaps the illustrator meant the Allied Nations. Well, well, I showed his original artwork, which is in the National uh, 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 <laughs> Depository in, in Washington for that kind of information. And, and that was the term that he used. And I think uh, I, I think was referring to the Allied Nations rather yeah. than the United Nations, because I think it, the United Nations, uh, well, it didn't it, exist. It, it no. didn't exist, but it got formed by the the winning powers, if you yeah. want, uh, fr from World War II. But that's an interesting uh, observation that, about the terminology that was maybe uh, going on. Maybe I'm um, certainly this is that type of drawing would have been uh, drawn after uh, probably after 1945. Yeah. I would uh, also point out that France fell to the Nazis in 1940, not 41. Okay, uh, that's. Uh... They would they would have been much less happy had they had another, or they'd been much happier had they had another year free of the Nazis. I think so. Uh, I would just uh, have a comment on a recent French film that I just uh, streamed from Amazon uh, about Charles de Gaulle and the establishment of the Free French Movement, the very early days, basically uh, 
from the fall of France after the Blitzkrieg in uh, May 1940 up until July 1940 when he uh, established himself in London. Rather interesting movie. It's available for downloading uh, or uh, streaming from Amazon for Amazon Prime members. Appropriately, it's just called De Gaulle. It is in French with English subtitles. The character that played uh, uh, Churchill in London, who was in active negotiations with de Gaulle at the time to establish the free French movement, actually spoke a fair amount of French, uh, uh, badly uh, accented uh, English uh, or French uh, spoken uh, with a very heavy English accent. <laughs> which was rather interesting, but I guess he spoke uh, a fair amount of French, uh, Churchill. Uh, this never got to the colonies at the time they were talking about moving on from London to Algeria, um, but uh, uh, not to the point where uh, de Gaulle landed in uh, French equatorial Africa. And there was no mention of course of Ibwe uh, in this uh, movie. Uh, it was the very early days uh, in uh, uh, up until July 1940. I talked a lot about his family uh, and how they attempted to escape dangerously from France to go to England. Uh, his wife and children, including a daughter with Down syndrome, very interesting movie. I think uh, our members uh, might enjoy watching it. Thanks, Tom. Anybody else have comments or questions for Jim? Anybody have any questions they wanna ask in general? I hope you uh, saw Elaine's comment that um, Abuay was a Freemason. I might mention that, uh, you know, you, you, you start off uh, uh, collecting, in my case anyway, the colonies, and you, you see these names and just uh, Felix and Boye show up. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the Scott's catalog, uh, there's maybe a little note under there that he was the, the first to uh, uh, kind of rally to the free French, but it was obviously a very complex situation. Uh, the, well, I, I've had uh, other articles that I've written on the, the free French uh, saying that uh, in, even in my St. Pierre uh, history here, uh, there was, uh, there, the Frenchmen were torn between honoring uh, the uh, commitments uh, that Patin made for the Vichy France and joining the, the free French, which were uh, uh, renegades at the time anyway, uh, and, you know, who, who was going to win the war? Uh, was it going to be the Allied side uh, with France in there? Or uh, was it going to be the German side? And how, well, you look at even present day circumstances, uh, say, in the Ukraine, uh, who, who's going to win? What, what's your future going to be? Uh, uh, I, I guess in many cases, you just leave the country and, and hope to land in the United States or Canada or Germany or someplace like this and start over again. Mm -hmm. Any more? Uh, may I show you a cover from uh, Ibwe? Of course. Oh, there we go. Uh, there is no date, unfortunately. It's uh, a cover addressed to the free French in Brazil. 
uh, forwarded by uh, pouch, by diplomatic mail. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is no year. There is uh, Mark Ebway, uh, I suppose, is uh, uh, I suppose it's uh, the sender. Very interesting. Hey. Very interesting. Are, are, are there any examples of his handwriting? Did, might he have actually written that envelope? Hello? Oui, tu peux me traduire. Oui, Est-ce que tu, tu peux me traduire des exemples de, de son, son écriture manuscrite pour confirmer que c'est lui qui aurait écrit l'enveloppe? Le, non, ça peut être son secrétaire. Hein. No, it could be his, his assistant or secretary who, who wrote the, the address on, on the envelope. We, Alain doesn't know. Mais il y a l'entête, il y a l'entête quand même qui confirme que c'est lui qui. Ça vient de son bureau. Yeah, the header is from from the the yes. Governor General of uh, French West yes. Africa, so it is definitely his office, and it was right. sent to you know uh, the, the important like uh, recipient in uh, in Brazil who was also the delegate of the of the Free French or Fighting French. Um, so it's. Probably, and the, the mention everywhere on the on the letter itself might indicate that somebody at some point effectively wrote maybe that the name of the sender from inside because it was controlled by the you know it was examined by the by the censor. Who knows? It's an interesting course. Uh, Anna doesn't have the inside of the mail. <laughs> That's too bad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I I have a, a, a cover. Uh, from Saint Pierre that went to Haiti uh, to a sort of free French club that would have been uh, established, say, in Haiti that that would be supporting the three French. And uh, I imagine there were similar clubs, probably uh, uh, well in Canada, the United States, and other uh, allied countries uh, uh, that would sort of be promoting. Uh, the, the free French against the uh, the the pro German uh, Vichy uh, side there. Uh, I, I I always remember the end of Casablanca, where Claude Rains and Humphrey Bogart go go off to siege, uh, join Charles de Gaulle at Brazzaville, uh, and join the free French. Uh, I'm surprised nobody has issued a stamp showing them. <laughs> Are you collecting any of the postal history uh, related to all of this, Jim? The these stamps and and whatnot, or are you just using the stamps as historical backgrounds for for the history that you're looking into? Well, I was uh, using it maybe as historical background, but I did, you know, with the advent of the internet, uh, you can review thousands and thousands of covers in a few days. And I did see one that was addressed to uh, the governor general of um, uh, equatorial, French equatorial Africa in Brazzaville, uh, you know, from a commercial firm, you know, probably trying to get a signature on a contract or something like this. Uh, but I thought that was just a little bit removed because it probably wouldn't have crossed his desk because some some bureaucrat would have uh, handled it. But uh, that would be quite an interesting uh, thing to look for. Uh, you know, some of these things lay hidden. And if you know the dates and some of the background or the names of some of the individuals involved, uh, sometimes you can spot these if if you're really diligent, but they're probably very, very, very scarce. But I was also wondering just about the use of, uh, of the Ebeway stamps uh, on cover and, uh, you know, just mo the, the modern postal history of the period with, with those stamps that all tie into your story. Yeah, that would be, that, that would be uh, uh, something uh, to look for as well.
Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Just one quick comment on the on the, the Pantheon in Paris, uh, where, where you have you know some famous French people who are buried there. Uh, joining Félix Eboué, we, we had another you know black person who was buried there you know last year. Um, Josephine Baker uh, was a big uh, big <laughs> ceremony in Paris, uh, and there are very few uh, few black you know people who are in the Pantheon. There are some mentions. Uh, regarding Toussaint Louverture or Aimé Césaire about, you know, from, from the colonies as well, but very few, uh, very few black persons there. So something we're going to have to, to work on. <laughs> yeah. There is a, a collecting group uh, who collect, uh, you know, uh, famous black uh, Americans and, and other uh, uh, African uh, 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 notables in the United States, and I did receive uh, uh, the okay from Novel to, uh, or from the editor of the France and Colonies Philatelist to pass the article on to the editor of their newsletter in case that would be uh, of interest to them. And I haven't seen it uh, published or whether I'm, I'm not sure what they did with it, but uh, it, it may show up in their journal. Very good. I, on a sad note, I just uh, received an email this past week that the president of that group passed away unexpectedly. But the, I, is that the, the group, Ebony Ebony Group? Yeah, yeah the I mean, Esper. Oh, Esper, yeah. Yeah, Esper. Yeah. All right. Then next month, what did I tell you? I've closed the file, so I don't remember. Victor, Victor Senor by Ed. <laughs> yeah, we're going back to Africa, but yeah. all of it, not just French Africa. Oh, that's right, Ed. It's going to be you. That's right. Very Ed, good. Ed, send us some good vibes in the meantime, okay? Oh, yeah. I've got some good slides for you. In fact, I have a great slide from, of all places, the Akron Collectors Club. Oh, <laughs> yes. You will remember that slide. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very because good. There's going to be a new a new question to be asked about whether success waves could be transmitted over a computer. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that will be four weeks from today at two o'clock Eastern time in the United States. And I encourage you all to join us again. We'll get the email con through constant contact sent out so that you know how to find us. And until then, I thank everybody for being here and listening to Jim, and especially Jim, I thank you for putting on an interesting presentation for us this afternoon. This was fun. Pleasure. Anything else? All right, I'm going to turn off the recording. Bye-bye. And goodbye for today.